Welcome back to another episode of the Trans Atheist. Today we're going to be exploring the June meeting of the Elida Trans People Scares Us Club. Just some snippets, though, because the meeting went on for two freaking hours, and I'm not putting out a two-hour video of just me responding to these idiots. We'll probably do it in multi-parts. Today, we're going to be dealing with one of my favorite, we'll put it that way, characters from this group, the amazing Dr. Robert Nidick. And trust me, you will be amazed. You'll be amazed that this man actually got a medical license. Who the hell gave it to him? God only knows, because this is, well, you just, just watch and we'll go from there. Good evening. My name's Rob Nidick. Yeah, Rob, we know it's you. Go ahead and get into the big dose of transphobia you've got for us today. Everybody's waiting. And uh, I just want to talk for a few minutes um, about what's going on, not just in Elida, but uh, across the country. Did you mean like radicalized parents groups that have been brainwashed by Fox News and other right-wing talking heads? Oh no, wait a minute. You don't mean that because you're one of the radicalized morons. Okay, go right on ahead, Robbie boy. Everyone, I think, can sense that um, there's problems um, and there is a spiritual battle that's going on uh, in our nation and in the in the world so this is not a physical battle this is a spiritual battle a battle of spiritual forces in high places and it's being played out on the earth here and the satanic influences are extremely clear and obvious Oh, and Rob goes straight for the jugular. You know, why bother having a conversation with the person that opposes you when you can start out by dehumanizing them, by making it so that they've been controlled by Satan? Sorry, Rob. Never met the guy. But I think it's worth pointing, pointing these things out. Number one, we're in a spiritual battle. And we are up against an ideology of evil intentions, a satanic ideology and ideology. So what could be this satanic ideology that Dr. Nidick is talking about? Could it be Nazism? Could it be communism? Perhaps he's talking about an outside alien invasion by intergalactic forces. No, no, it's trans people. This is the big thing that they are so afraid about. It's not just that people want to do this or they want to do that. The reason behind these things, the underlying ideology, is wicked and satanic. I thought of doing a drinking game for every time that the doc here calls trans people satanic, but unfortunately... <laughs> I'm like 40 years old and I can't afford that hangover in the morning, so proceed at your own risk. The best, um, the best description that you could get in a short chapter in the Bible, which I'm sure folks have read, is in Romans chapter 1. Nope, Rob, I didn't come here for a Bible lesson. Let's speed this section up. And then as you read verse down to 31, it says, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable and unmerciful. Implacable is really, really good word. Implacable, it's an old word. It means that you, you can't be placated, that you're never, ever satisfied. There is no satisfaction. We just want a civil union. 
We just want to have the same rights as this person. We just want to do this. We just want to do that. People now might call that, if you give an inch, you take a mile. It's imp they're implacable. It will never, ever, ever stop. Because they are looking for joy and peace and fulfillment in all the wrong places. There's no way to fulfill what they want filled by cutting off body parts, by taking hormones, and by doing these things that they're trying to do because of the anxiety and depression that, that people suffer. Cutting off body parts. Yeah, that's a pretty popular one with Dr. Nidick. Um, not sure he's ever actually looked into how gender confirmation surgery works because they don't exactly just cut things off. Um, as for the hormones part, you know, I kind of remember when I started hormones, and I can tell you, made me pretty damn happy. But, yeah, anxiety, depression, yeah, that kind of can come to the game when you're dealing with people like these assholes on a regular basis. But, you know... That would involve some self-awareness on his part of actually realizing that he's part of the problem, not the solution, and self-awareness is not something these guys have. Who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. This is condemning people that support this ungodly lifestyle and have pleasure in those that do them. That's the thing about Dr. Nidick. Just when you think it can't get any darker, he throws in a little condemnation to hell and some deserving of death quotes. Let's be forward just a little bit and get to some more interesting parts. And also remember, what does it say? God gave them up. God gave them over. God gave them up. This is a punishment from God. God get, is giving millions of people over. This is a punishment. I, this is my opinion. This, this appears to be a punishment. Otherwise, you know, people might, you know, you would expect people to use common sense. Being trans is a punishment, Doc? So what? God ran out of locusts and boils and decided, let's go with gender dysphoria. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, so, if we've been given up, could you do us one little favor? Could you try giving the hell up, too? Because, geez -a Lou, we've heard enough from you already. It was the same thing. It was a similar thing with these uh, jabs, these shots. It was just a very strange thing. In other words... There's no data. Yeah, I'm going to stop it right there because he's now going into anti-vax stuff. That will probably result in my video getting taken down if I keep it going. So we'll just skip ahead. Needless to say, this is a doctor who does not understand science and does not understand how vaccines work. It's an attack. A frontal assault yet. It didn't used to be a frontal assault. You know, you, you, you pedophiles and... You know, all of these things, homosexuality and transgenders and transvestites, drag queen. This was all stuff that was sort of in the shadow back here at a nightclub. You might, you know, some people might do these things. I guess everyone here knows what uh, pedophiles are called now. Maps. Maps. Minor attracted persons. So they're not pedophiles anymore because pedof pedophile has a negative connotation. When you read the literature, this is peer reviewed literature. It's normal. Map is not an LGBT term. That's actually a psychological term that's used in some literature. And the point of it is not because pedophile has become insulting or or mean-spirited. No, it's that the science recognizes the difference between someone who has an urge and someone who acts on an urge. So basically what they're saying is there are people who have an urge that are attracted 
to minors, and that is a problem, and that's actually something they diagnose and they treat people for this. A pedophile is someone who acts on that, and that is in fact a criminal offense. Because we don't live in a country where we have thought crimes, we can't go after people simply because they have a thought. Number one, you can't know what their thoughts are unless they tell you. What we do go after is we go after actions. So when someone offends, they're held accountable. And personally, I'm in favor of holding them as accountable as we freaking can when it comes to crap like this. But quit trying to lump this stupid bullshit in with the LGBT community because it's never had a thing to do with us. Especially when you look at the documentation and see that the vast majority of pedophiles are actually cis straight white guys. Not trans people, not drag queens, mostly cis straight white guys. But it's really been since the, you know, the guy has been in the White House there the last couple years, that that individual uh, uh, event has catalyzed the, the rate of change of decline very, very quickly. It was already declining, but the rate of change, the slope of the change is, is really steep. In other words, he flies the, you know, the uh, transgender flag on both sides of the American flag in violation of all the flag flag rules and the whole thing. And false. That is actually not a violation of the flag code. He should try reading it. Most of them bri uh, break the flag code every time they put on their little flag shirts for the 4th of July. But if you notice, the flags are hanging. They're not actually from a pole because we don't have three flagpoles set up at the White House. They hang them from the balcony. And under the flag code, they do not need to be like lower than the American flag. That is reserved for things like foreign flags or state flags, this is not even a thing. And if, if you look now, if you look now, it's not just a rainbow flag. What do those triangles mean in the middle of the flag? There's a black one, then a brown one, then a blue one, then a pink one, then a white one. So there's triangles and then all the lines go like this. Go look, the one that's hanging out in front of the White House. What do those colors mean and why are they on that flag? It's not good. You mean this flag, Dr. Nydick? The Progress Pride flag? Um, it's a flag design. And the chevrons, the black and brown, stand for people of color that have often been marginalized and forgotten even within the LGBT community. And the blue, pink, and white actually stand for trans people. You know, blue, boy, pink, girl. And the white is that zone in between where it represents our non-binary friends. So, yeah, I, I'm not sure what crazy conspiracy bullshit you read about it, but that's pretty much all it is. It's a design. So, we are in a spiritual battle. We need everybody to pray for the people that you know, for the kids. And we need to do the, our, our level best to stop policies and activities that are ungodly, immoral, and wrong. So the, the, there, there's going to be a parade, I guess, on 24th downtown. Ah, oh, Dr. Nydick, that was our parade. Thank you. It's so hard to get good publicity anymore, and you did it for free. I think it'd be good if people came and just had a sign that, you know, that said whatever it is that you want to say about that this is, this ideology is wrong. Hmm. And how did that work out for you, Dr. Nydick? Well, I remember really well, and as it turns out, not very many people came from your side with signs, uh, maybe six people. We had a really good turnout for the first year. Um, let's see, media covered it, and we got some really good opportunities to get on the news and share some information. And ultimately, this guy is the only one that brought a sign, and, well, enjoy, I guess. I mean, whatever. But, yeah, great job there, Dr. Nydick. The people have gender dysphoria. I mean, the individuals. They're confused. They're, they, it's a mental condition. But we cannot be drawn into their mental condition and their delusion and 
you know, we can only try to tell them the truth. They won't hear the truth, and if God has given them up, they'll never hear the truth. And this is where we end the video today because I'm both out of time and patience for this blowhard. Um, not a whole lot to add in there except that, you know, gender dysphoria may be classified in the DSM-5, but being transgender is not actually a mental illness. Gender dysphoria, you know, has a very firm line of treatment, which involves, oh, I don't know, transition. And basically everything that Dr. Nydick said is the very thing that exacerbates gender dysphoria, depression, anxiety, all the other things. So, yeah. But as for the whole being turned over by God, I, I don't know, like a flapjack gets turned over? I have no clue. Um, ultimately, though, this is what you get out of this Elida Parents group. It's nothing more than a bunch of right-wing... You know, pseudoscience, conspiracy theory, transphobia, homophobia, Christian nationalism, all wrapped up into one. None of it makes one damn bit of sense. What really doesn't make any damn bit of sense is that there's a doctor who should know, but apparently is too ignorant to know. Um, or too bigoted to accept what he knows. But ultimately, that's it for today. I will do a part two eventually to get into some of the other speeches from the meetings, but this gives you a good taste of just what's going on in Elida, Ohio. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you'll join us again soon for another episode of The Trans Atheist. And please, if you have a moment, stop by our page on the internet for the Northwestern Ohio Trans Advocacy which is at ohiotransadvocacy.com. Thanks, and I will see you very soon.